One of these stacks of clothes has a robot hiding underneath it. Can you tell which one it is? Man, Dora would be so disappointed in you. It's almost Halloween, the best time of the year. I mean, it's like Christmas, but instead of having to find people presents, you just try and terrify them and give them candy afterwards. So in the spirit of the season, I wanted to make a spooky robot. Now, the three things that scared me the most as a kid would be number one, E.T. from the movie E.T., obviously. Number two, the three and a half foot tall ceramic clown that terrified me every time I tried to go up the stairs at night. And then number three, which is the one that I think would be the easiest to try and turn into a robot, is that amorphous pile of clothes that could be anything in the dark and seems to move a little bit every time you look away. First up, I want the robot to be able to sense where in the room somebody is, because I think you would agree that inching towards or away from somebody would be a lot scarier than just running around willy-nilly. So I think I'm gonna take advantage of a knee-jerk reaction that we have, which is if you hear something go bump in the night or see something suspicious, you shine a light on it, and I think I can find that light source. This is called a photoresistor. It's a really simple component that comes in a lot of Arduino kits and stuff like that. Basically, it just relates the amount of light that's hitting it to its resistance. So whenever it's covered, it goes up, and whenever it's not covered, the resistance goes back down. The most common way I've seen these sensors used to detect the direction of a light source is to have two sensors facing forward with a divider in the middle. This way, when one of the sensors has more light hitting it than the other, you know you have to turn toward that sensor until both have an equal amount of light hitting them. It's kind of like playing a game of hot and cold. Now that method would work great, but I think I'd rather the robot be able to work off of Toy Story rules, meaning that while someone is looking at it, it can't move, which means if the flashlight's on it, it's probably still being looked at, so it can't move to find the light source. So to make it more terrifying or spooky, I want to make it so that it can find that light source, record the direction it needs to turn, and then just wait. So to do that, I had to take a closer look at how these sensors worked. Now if light was coming in from straight in front of the sensor, then that would give it the max projected area, which would also have the maximum impact for that brightness of light on the resistance of the sensor. So it would make sense that if the same brightness of light was angled, that it would have a diminished projected area, and then also have a diminished effect on the resistance of the sensor. But we just kind of moved the problem further down the line, because now there's no way to differentiate between just a dimmer light or a light coming in at an angle. But let's try separating two sensors from a center line by an angle that we know, which we'll call alpha naught. Now, when light comes in, we'll call that unknown angle from the center line alpha. We'll also need some lines to represent the projected area of the sensors, because that's the only thing we can really measure here. After a little bit of geometry, you can find some important relationships between alpha, alpha naught, and then the projected area of each sensor. Lastly, I set alpha naught to 45 degrees to make my math a lot easier, and then I found relationships between all of these angles and the projected area slash the resistance that's felt by the sensor. So after a little bit of trig, I find out that if I can find the ratio of the projected areas, which I can use resistance, which I can totally measure, I can find alpha, which is the angle I need to move the robot to face the light. So I mean, here's two photoresistors, let's slap it on a servo and see if we can't point towards a light source. <laughs> uh, it's like an Arduino starter project with like two photoresistors and a servo with a little bit of math and it works amazing. That worked fantastically and it told me that with four sensors I could use any pair of them to tell me what direction a light source is. And then comparatively building the robot underneath it wasn't that hard, it's basically just an Arduino, a battery pack, and some stepper motors to control the angle of the robot and move forward and backwards, whatever else I need to do. So now, I just need to print all the parts and build the thing.
So my original thought was to run it really slow so it could be kind of creeping along and harder to notice, but when you do that, instead of being creepy, it just... Yeah, it's obnoxiously loud, so that's gonna be a problem. So it turns out that if you run it like 10 times faster, it's quieter for some reason. So I'm gonna go with that because I think I'd much rather it be fast and quiet than slow and loud. First up, let's see how well it can sense where the light's coming from. Jeez, uh, that's almost scary enough on its own. Now I find this so satisfying because instead of having to move and then check the brightness values and then move again until you find the light source, this is just bang. As fast as the Arduino can calculate it, it knows where the light source is and then it can wait till that light source is off before it moves. Also, satellites use similar concepts to figure out where the sun is to determine their orientation in space, but instead of costing thousands of dollars, this costs on the order of a couple cents, which, you know, makes it cooler. It can also easily perform just as fast as the hot and cold method by recalculating the direction to the light continuously. Next up, I had to see how having a pile of clothes over it would affect the robot, and that's where these holes in the chassis come in because you can either thread filament or wire through them to break up the outline of the robot or to keep the clothes from getting tangled in the wheels. First up is with nothing on top. It's pretty much perfectly accurate. It might be off by a degree or two, maybe. I found that white shirts diffuse too much light and confuse the sensors. <laughs> Tight-knit black shirts made it so dark that the robot didn't even notice the flashlight was on. But I had the best luck with lightly colored t-shirts and this black dry fit t-shirt that let some light through without diffusing much of it. So I think I'm going to use that dry fit t-shirt, and now I just need to decide how I want the robot to act, which this is what I came up with. Stage 1, wait for the room to get dark. Stage 2, wait for the flashlight to be pointed at it. Stage 3, wait until that flashlight is turned off. Stage 4, wait some more. <laughs> Stage 5 is going to be turn towards the person. Stage 6, wait again. Stage 7, move towards them, and then so on and so on until it bumps into you or whatever. And here's what it looks like. I'm going to fast forward through the boring parts. There's a lot of flexibility here. I mean, you could have it just make a little noise by moving until someone shines a light on it, then you could have it freak out. You could do so many different things with the controls aspect of it. But you could also put not just clothes on top of the robot, but anything that doesn't block the sensors or bog down the motor, which is the long way of saying that I wasted an hour and a half of my life this weekend making a cardboard Minecraft spider. And for this spider setup, I thought it'd be more fun just to have it immediately point at the light instead of waiting and creeping around. Honestly, I am way too lazy to invite a bunch of friends over to come look at this thing. Plus, like, all three of them have heard about it anyway, so let's just try it on a dog. <laughs> yeah, she is no. clearly terrified of it and not just a big fan of small spaces. <laughs> that would be the part that just proves it right there. She just runs past it without looking. Come here. She does not care. <laughs> Go look at go look at the thing. Not the flashlight. She's scared of little kids, of strollers, and she runs away from crumpling plastic, but the big giant spider running around in the middle of the room, that's nothing. I'll eat a treat in front of that. Does not care at all. She's like it's just noisy is all she said. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, I hope you consider subscribing and maybe commenting and saying what you want to see me do next. Also, if you guys want to make a robot like this yourself, here's the circuit diagram, and I'll link everything else that you need in the description, and don't forget to tag me with a picture or a video or something on social media.